This question came in from a viewer who wanted to use Excel VBA to save a group of shapes as a picture, which does sound like it should be a fairly straightforward thing to do, but sadly it's a little more complex than it should be. You may well already know that in Excel if you've grouped a bunch of shapes together, so here I've got a group of basic charts, here a group of basic auto shapes, you can right click on one of those objects and choose to save that as a picture. Sadly, however, when you try to record that in the macro recorder, or even access the option in Excel VBA, the option simply isn't available. So the workaround for this, it's a fairly messy workaround, is to create a chart object on the page, and then copy the picture into the chart object, and then use the export method of the chart. So we'll take a quick look at how that works in this video. So I've started by creating my shapes and then grouping them together, and I've also given my groups sensible names. So with the group of objects selected, you can rename them by either typing a name into the name box in the top left hand corner, or if you prefer, from the home tab in the ribbon, use the find and select button to open the selection pane, and you may find it easier to rename things in here instead. I'm just going to copy my chart group, the, uh, the group name there to the clipboard, and then we'll start by writing some code that will get a reference to that group of shapes. So in the Visual Basic Editor, I've got a new module and I've written my subroutine save shape as picture. And I'm going to start by declaring a variable called GRP, short for group, as shape. Now I want to get a reference to that shape object. So I'm going to say set GRP equals, and I'm just going to reference the sheet one object using its code name. Of course, there are various other ways to do this. And then I'm going to refer to the shapes collection on there. And then in some round brackets and double quotes, paste in my chart group, and then close the double quotes and close the round brackets. Once I've done that, I can copy a picture of that group of shapes just by saying grp.copyPicture. This is where ideally we'd have an export or a save as picture method, but sadly none of those options are available. So we're just going to copy that object as a picture. Next, I want to create a new chart object with the same dimensions as the group of shapes I've just copied. So to help with that, let's declare a new variable. I'll call mine CO as chart object. And then I'll create that chart on the same worksheet as the group of shapes. So we'll say set CO equals sheet one dot chart objects dot add. Now it would be nice to get some help from the IntelliSense and the tooltips at this point, but sadly it breaks down. So to get a bit of extra information, you could try clicking on the chart objects keyword hit the F1 key on your keyboard to fire up the context sensitive help system, taking you straight off to the chart objects method help page. From here, I'm going to follow the link to the chart objects object. And then from here on the left hand side in the methods list, I can find the add method and finally see the four parameters of the add method of a chart objects object. So I'm going to set the left top width and height parameters using the same properties as the group of shapes. So back into the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to refer to group.left, group.top, group.width, and finally group.height. Then having done that, let's just try running the subroutine at this point to see the end results. So if we switch back to the Excel window, we should see a new shape sitting on top of the existing group of chart objects. You can see it's appeared here on the selection pane on the right hand side. If I click on that to select it, obviously at the end of the procedure, I'd want that chart to be deleted. I'm just going to manually delete it for now. So it's gone. And then I'm going to head back to the visual basic editor. And just to make sure that at the end, that chart object gets removed, I'm going to say co.delete. And then we'll do the, uh, the useful stuff in between those lines. So one last go, I'm going to just move this out of the way briefly, use the F8 key to step through. So we can see the chart object gets created and then it gets deleted at the end. And that's the end of the procedure. Next, I just want to paste the copied picture into the chart of the chart object we've created. And the instruction to do that is pretty straightforward. We can just say co.chart.paste. Now there's a bit of a potential gotcha here that affects me at least on my own machine. If I just stepped through this procedure nice and slowly so we can see what's going on, we can use the F8 key to do that. We should be able to see that once we've copied or created the new chart object, pasting the picture of the chart makes it appear and then we can delete it. Of course, we'd save it as an image first. And watch what happens though if I just comment out the delete line and I just run this one as fast as it will go. It definitely creates the chart object, but the picture doesn't appear to get pasted. 
Um, now I found this works more successfully. I'm just going to manually delete that extra chart. Let's get rid of that. I found this works a little more successfully if we select the chart object first. So I'm going to say co.select and then again run this one as fast as it'll go. And this time the object does get the chart or the, uh, the picture pasted into the chart. Let's just get rid of that one again by uh, manually deleting it. And then, oops, I think I've deleted the wrong thing. Let me just try that again. Let's select and delete. There we go. And then finally, we can get back to the code and deal with the saving as a picture. So finally, to save the chart as a picture, we can apply the export method to it. So we can say co.chart.export. And we'll see there's a single compulsory parameter, which is the file name and an optional parameter called filter name, which allows you to specify the graphic filter. And this really does appear to be optional. We can set the, uh, the graphic type just by applying the correct file name extension. But just to demonstrate, if I were to save this file in the same folder as the workbook that this code is stored in, I'm going to say export this workbook dot path and then concatenate to the end of that a backslash. And let's call this one chart pick. We could save it as a PNG first, for example. And if you were going to specify the filter name, you can just enter the PNG uh, abbreviation there as well, Portable Network Graphics. So it doesn't appear to be um, necessary. Uh, you can save with the, uh, the file name extension and it will still save as a PNG file. Just to prove that that's, uh, that's created, there it is. Have a quick look. There's the final image. And we can, of course, change that to any of the other standard file types. So let's go for JPG. And again, I haven't actually tried mixing and matching the, the filter names with the, uh, the file name extensions. Um, maybe just to prove that you don't need that part. Let's take away the filter name, run it again, and we've got a, a JPG file instead. Looks pretty similar to me. And then we could use a, a BMP if you prefer. Uh, I don't know why you'd use uh, bitmaps, but there we go. Um, and then what else can we go? GIF or GIF, how do you pronounce it? I genuinely do not care. Um, GIF or GIF, whatever your personal preference. There we go. So they all work pretty nicely. So there we go. There's the final code to save a group of shapes as a picture. I appreciate it. It's a bit of a faff, um, but at least it works. It seems fairly reliable and it applies not just to charts, which was what the original question was all about, but also to generic collections of standard auto shapes. So I've got a my shape group object here. If I just alter the name of the, uh, the, the shape I was referring to in the first part and then just call this one shape pick, for example, when we export it, let's go back to a PNG and then run the subroutine again. We should see a new um, shape pick file has appeared. So you can do it for any combination of shapes you can group together on a worksheet. Hopefully that answers the original question. Um, hopefully you found that one useful. Thanks ever so much for watching and we'll see you next time.